Ambassador, uh, I want to just show, I don't know if our viewers have had a chance uh, to take a look at this, but I want to show uh, the Twitter page of Charlie Hebdo. Uh, this is, by the way, the I Am Charlie Twitter site, but there was uh, before uh, uh, the Twitter page of Charlie Hebdo, which showed the cartoon uh, that I'm not saying is responsible for this shooting, but is part of the long line of uh, satire that has been uh, released by this magazine that's targeted uh, Muslim and Muslim leaders. Uh, it was a picture of the Islamic State militant group leader Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi. And, uh, you know, Mark, I, I just point that out uh, only because uh, it, conti it sort of underscores, I think, uh, what we've been talking about all morning long uh, in France among the populace, which is this growing unease among non-Muslim French of the growing Muslim population and of the extremist factor of that and how they're integrated or not integrated in society there. Well, indeed, Betty, the fact of the matter is, is that just several years ago when President Sarkozy passed a law to ban the hibaj, which is the complete covering of the face by Muslim women, there has been a constant tension between this largest Muslim population in Europe and its extremist roots that have been growing almost by the day. Uh, once France joined the coalition against ISIS, where Charlie Hebdo has had a field day satirizing uh, Muslims and Islamic extremists indeed, uh, but it has a long history here. It was firebombed in November of 2011 for its own cartoon depictions of the Prophet Muhammad. And indeed, the more that extremism has taken root in Paris, particularly uh, by targeting not just non-Muslims, but particularly the Jewish community. When I was in Paris this past summer, there had been five separate firebombs of Jewish businesses by Islamic extremists, which largely so, goes unreported here. So, so this is so. If I may read you correctly, this is not a surprise, a long time coming, Mark. Indeed, in fact, well, we've all known that Charlie Hebdo has been targeted, and had, and indeed received regular threats. Uh, indeed, the fact that it had been so poorly uh, protected, the building and the offices, is deeply disturbing. And what's even more disturbing is the ease by which the gunmen escaped. Uh, and according, I just want to jump in here, uh, the, the, according to Metro News, there's been an explosion in Sarcelles. That's just north of Paris. Um, the synagogue there had been uh, targeted for violence uh, earlier this year as well. Mm. Um, Ambassador, I want to ask a little bit about Sharb. This is the owner of, uh, of, of the magazine and also um, was killed. This is the cartoonist. Um, uh, uh, our own Julie Hyman uh, pulled up, a, found a profile of him. Uh, where, he, where he said to LeMond earlier this year, I don't have kids, no wife, no car, no credit. It might be a little pompous to say it, but I prefer to die standing instead of living on my knees. What does he mean to France? There is an enormous uh, history of satire in, the French, in French journalism going back to the days of the revolution. It is, a, it is almost uh, a standard. It's like the equivalent of every television show uh, whether you call Colbert or Saturday Night Live or uh, John Stewart, all rolled into one into journalism and a, a very true practice tradition in Paris. And indeed, some of the satires are probably the most respected journalists in France. Uh, Mark, I want to bring it, though, uh, back here to the U.S. Uh, I know you have been uh, rather critical uh, of uh, President Obama and how he has dealt with Islamic state. What do you think the president should do now? Is this a rallying call uh, to take further action uh, to, uh, to take further action against Islamic State? Well, the coalition has that it was wanted by Secretary Kerry when it was announced several months ago has decayed somewhat. Although we have strong support from France, the NATO allies have done really a very insufficient amount of support to, to support the United States and several of its coalition allies in the attacks against ISIS in Iraq and Syria. We have made progress. There's no doubt that the administration has, has an effect through our military and air force, have done a considerable amount of damage. But the fact is, is that France, being a member of NATO, the United States being a member of NATO, look at the fact that Turkey is still on the sidelines. Look at the fact that Germany has and, and Great Britain have failed to do enough to support the United States. And more importantly, Arab states have done uh, particularly Certain states in the region uh, have done insufficient uh, work to try to quell the ideological underpinning of ISIS. Hey, Ambassador, one of the great terrifying and unanswered questions right now has been what happens when people trained by ISIS go home. Do intelligence services have any sense of 
uh, you know, w w whether these attacks are, uh, not these, these specifically, but, um, you know, whether people are going home to actually commit attacks or whether, there's, whether these are uh, homegrown and just inspired by what's happening abroad? Gosh, Brendan, it's a hard call because France has been not only engaged in the battle against ISIS, but has also waged a, a quite a secret but nevertheless effective war against Al Qaeda in the Western Sahara and North in North Africa in recent months. And so, the, any number of these people could be coming from any number of places. French intelligence has been pretty damn good at being able to find out who is left to fight for ISIS. But you know, like anything else, all it takes is one person to get through. Mm. All right, Mark, thank you so much for joining us. Mark Ginsburg, the former U.S. ambassador uh, to Morocco.